is everybody tonight? Yes. All right. So I've been all over the place today, um, just really trying to hear the Lord. And um, as we were in pre-service, this morning I read a scripture, and then while I was in pre-service, I, um, <laughs> where's mom? There she is. <laughs> so I heard this scripture, and um, what I heard was, it was about how God's joy was set before him, how Jesus' joy was set before him, before, in order for him to be able to go to the cross. And so in Hebrews 12, verse 2, it says, Looking upon Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. So we all know that this meant that he kept his eyes on what was before him as far as heavenly, not what he was going to suffer here on earth. And so he had the joy that was set before him. And now he sits at the right hand of the Father. But what I read today, and it, I'm just going to go there. So I'm going to go to uh, John chapter 17. And I'm... One of the things that I talked about um, uh, prior to prior to um, Easter was how Jesus prayed for his disciples and how Jesus prayed for the believers before he went to be crucified. So in that prayer, when I was reading it this morning, I'm going to go ahead and, and read it, and then when I get to the part I want to get to, it says, so... In uh, John chapter six, seventeen, verse 6, it says, I have manifested your name, capital Y, in that word in the middle of a sentence, we know that we're talking about God. So Jesus is speaking here, it's in red. So Jesus is saying, I have manifested your name to the men who you have given me. Remember, he's praying for the disciples out of the world. They were yours. You gave them to me, and I have kept your word. Amen. Now they have known that all things which you have given me are from you. For I have given to them the words which you have given me. And they have received them. And have known surely that I came forth from you and they have believed that you sent me Amen. I have prayed for them I do not pray for the world but for those whom you have given me for they are yours Amen. and all mine are yours and yours are mine and I am glorified in them now I am no longer in the world, but these are in the world. He's talking about the disciples. They're in the world just like we are. I come to you, Holy Father. Keep through your name those who you have given me, that they may be one as we are one. Yes. While I was with them in the world, I kept them in your name. We just talked about the name. We just pray, talked about the name. Everything, his name is above everything. Everything is kept by his name. Those who you gave me, I have kept. And none of them was lost except the son of perdition, that the scripture might be fulfilled. But now I come to you, and these things I speak in the world, that they may have my joy Fulfilled in themselves. Praise the Lord. I have given them your word. And the world has hated them. Because they are not of the world. Just as I am not of the world. I do not pray that you should take them out of the world. But that you should keep them from the evil one. This is Jesus praying for the disciples. 
They are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. Sanctify them by your truth. Your word is truth. Amen. As you sent me into the world, I also send them into the world. And for their sakes, I sanctify myself that they also may be sanctified by the truth. So we become sanctified by the truth. But one of the scriptures, as he's praying this, he's talking to the Father, Jesus is, for his disciples. But now we are the disciples of 2023. But one of the things that he said, which God put on my heart today, is that, but now I come to you, and these things I speak in the world, that they may have my joy fulfilled in themselves. His joy that was set before him is what helped him get to the cross. The joy that he had, he kept his eyes on so that he could walk to the through the crucifixion. It is him and him alone. But he's saying, now I want to give that joy to my disciples because he knew that they were going to suffer. Amen. He knew that some would be beheaded. He knew that some would be boiled in oil. He knew that the persecution was going to come. Guys, persecution comes to believers, whether it's looks or snarls or or being rejected or not getting a job or just being disliked because of the spirit of God who you carry into a room. People religious, they're here, they're in churches, they're everywhere. They have trouble with spirit-filled Christians, people who walk in things that are outside of the box sometimes, but we're not in a box. God was never in a box, right? right? And so we need to understand that Jesus said, I now give them my joy. I want them to be fulfilled. I want them to be fulfilled with my joy. Fill them with my joy. Fill them with the same joy that you gave me, the joy that I needed, because that's what got me to the cross. That's what got me through the beating. That's what got me through the whipping. That's what got me through the rejection. That's what got me there through it all. You know, I really do believe that the Holy Spirit will give us supernatural ability to endure things here on this earth. I believe that with all my heart because I believe that the Holy Spirit that came and remained on Jesus remained for a purpose. And I believe not only to bring forth miracles, signs, and wonders, but to give him that endowment power to be able to get through the physical suffering that he Amen. went through. He went through all of that. We know about it. We understand a little bit. But I believe that Jesus has given me power by his Holy Spirit to overcome some things in my life I otherwise would have never overcome. So we need that joy. We need the Lord. We need him. He's there. We just don't always use him. Like, we don't depend on him. We depend on us. We depend on what we've been taught. We don't want to change. Change is coming, guys. Change is coming to this church, change is coming to other churches, change is coming. Because otherwise we just become a religious bunch of people that are comfortable in our seats. And God wants to do new things. He wants to bring new things. Not every part of the body is supposed to be like the other part of the body. That's why it's the body. We're not supposed to be like faith covenant. We're not supposed to be like the tap. We're supposed to be like river of life and what river of life has been called to. You are part of the body, so you're not supposed to be like Elsie. You're not supposed to be like Tina. You're not supposed to be like Dan. You're supposed to be the part of the body that God called you to be in the body. But in that, the whole body works together. Amen. Amen. And if we don't work together, then we're working against each other. And you cannot do that because if people are divided, it will not stand, right? I mean, we don't need to be having those immune deficiencies inside this body of Christ. Immune deficiency in a human body is where they're not able to fight off disease and infection and things like that. They're just depleted. You can't allow the body of Christ to become depleted. And the only way to do that is to be filled with the joy that Jesus is giving us. Amen. And that joy is not a ha-ha, let's celebrate joy. It is a joy, it's a strength. Because the joy of the Lord is our strength. Amen. So his strength also was joy. It took that strength to get him to the cross. So we're all bearing crosses of some sort in our life. Otherwise he wouldn't say, I'm going to give you this. And he prayed for us. And he said, again, 
But now I come to you, and these things I speak in the world, that they may have my joy fulfilled in themselves. My disciples, he's talking about my disciples. He's talking about his people, not the world, about us being in the world, because he's not asking that we be taken out of the world. A lot of people are waiting for rapture. I just want to make it to rapture. We can all get raptured out of here. Well, I don't, what about filling God's glory, filling the earth? Well, if we're all gone, how's his glory going to fill the earth, right? And so we want to keep doing our due diligence that God is calling us to. And that is leading people into the kingdom of heaven. That is bringing people into the salvation knowledge of Jesus. That is the first and foremost ministry of all things. That's the great commission. He gives us signs, miracles, and wonders when he works them through us. But they're not ours. They're his. We don't get to call them up. We don't get to say. He does it. What we have to do is be yielded to him so we hear his spirit so that we move with him when he's ready to do something like that. And most of the time, you're not going to want to go do it. Most of the time, you're going to be fighting the Lord in the flesh as your spirit is trying to obey and walk forward in the things that he's calling you to do. Most of the time, when anybody brings anything to you, most of the time, you react out of the flesh first. And then the spirit. I don't know why, but it's the truth. Somebody says something to you and you don't like it, the first reaction is anger or rejection of it or whatever. But after you take some time to mull it over with the Holy Spirit, you find truth in it. And then you find peace and then you're like, okay. Because you're being led by the spirit, not by the flesh. Amen. And so God is doing a great and mighty work in the body of Christ all over the nations. Not just here, but he's going to do more here than what you've ever seen. Even when, when BDR was here and things were happening all the time. Signs, miracles, and wonders, deliverance all the time. They're coming. The people are coming. But we need to be filled with what God said to be filled with, Amen. and that's himself. We need to be filled and speaking to him and reading his word and allowing him to bring revelation to us. We need not to judge one another and be critical of one another because there's no love in that. That's just division. And God's not about division, not in this church, because he called this church. And all these years, he's kept us afloat, and he's kept us going, and I praise him because it's all about him. And one of the things he's always said to me is, keep people's eyes on me, me, not the world, not the stuff that's happening in the world, me, because I'm the only one that can make a difference. That doesn't mean don't be aware, but don't get following it. Don't get caught up because he's telling us in these scriptures of everything that he's given us. I have manifested your name to these men who you have given me out of the world. So we came out of the world and Jesus manifested the name that's above every name. And because of that... Amen. People were saved. People were set free. People were healed. People were delivered. People's limbs grew out. That's still happening today. We just don't see it a lot in the U.S. of A. It's more over in countries that don't have what we have here, all the distractions and all the stuff that's going on. But it's happening. We've seen it happen because of the worldwide net. We can see, we watch that woman's arm literally grow in Africa, you know, just come out of this form, and it was still short, but it just grew out. A girl today, Marcy sent this to me, and I had already seen it, but it's so good, and this girl stood up, and, and I don't know who the women minister was, but she talked about how she was delivered, and she had so many afflictions. She was having six and seven seizures a day. She had major demonic influence because she and her mother were serving Satan. She was born into it, not anything that she asked. So she knew the power of Satan. So when she met the power of God, whoa, it brought change. And then she had to sneak and not take her pills because of all her diagnoses. They would have forced her to go get a shot. She literally had a clear thing that was full of pills, and she had a garbage bag besides. Trying to medicate something that didn't need to be medicated, she needed to be delivered. 
and she was delivered. And then God started just pouring into her. She had a desire. She wanted to be free. She hated the condition she was in. She didn't know. But somehow she ended up at a service, the right service, and God delivered her and made her free. She had to walk it out. She wasn't just being able to run around, I'm free, I'm free, I'm free. No, she had to walk it out. She had to fight the knocking of the door to step back into those things. She had to keep the door closed when things wanted to come back in her life. She had to fight the fight. She walked it out. She said it herself. And she wanted to hug the lady. She goes, I want to hug you so bad, but I feel like I might still have something on me. And she goes, come here. And gave her a hug. God is amazing. He's put all of what he is inside of us. Amen. But if we don't understand that the joy of the Lord is our strength, and if we don't keep our eyes on Jesus, and we get them on a man, or a church, or a woman, or ministry, we're going to be in trouble. Amen. We have to keep our eye on him, and we have to be in the word, and we need to be in worship, we need to be in fellowship with one another, and we need to love one another. Amen. And even love those that are really hard because they don't agree with you, and they don't like, and you don't like that they don't agree with you. That's pride. That just has to go away. Because otherwise, division comes. And do you want to risk that? Do you want to risk that when God has called you to be something or someone? It's all him. Amen. He's the only one that can get us to the places that we believe he's put in our hearts. And if we're not there yet, maybe it's us that thinks that we're supposed to be there. Maybe not. But this we know. We can trust God. Because it's him. Amen. If you try to build your own ministry... If you try to build your own stuff, you know, it takes me back to the story, um, and I think it's in Acts 5. Um, pretty sure it is. Let me just go there a second. Um, Acts 5. This is... Uh, I think it's X5, maybe not. I'm already to seven. Well, uh, let me just tell you the story. Oh, yep, here it is in X5. Yes. Okay. So this story is where the apostles were on trial. They were told that they weren't to preach um, the word of God. Guys, those days are coming. But anyways, they were told that they weren't supposed to, and so they were drug in before the magistrates, and and so. They were told that, you know, they wanted to kill him, but because of the followers and the people that were following the apostles, the disciples, which now were apostles, they were, um, they didn't know what to do with them. And there was a guy by the name of Gamelia, and so he stood up because they brought, they brought the men before them, and I'm sorry, this thing sometimes is such a pain. So um, I'm just going to take this up here. So what happened is they were trying to figure out what to do with these guys. And so Gamelia said, hey, put those guys out for a minute. I want to talk to you. So when they had heard this, they were furious and they plotted to kill. This is in, this is in Acts 5.33. It says, when they had heard this, so all these people that wanted to kill these guys, they were mad because they would not deny Jesus. They wouldn't stop doing what they were doing. And so, anyways, um, when they heard this, they were furious and plotted to kill them. Then one of the council stood up, a Pharisee named Gamelia, and a teacher of the law, held in respect by all the people. So here's a man, respected very well, and he commanded them to put the apostles outside for a little while. And he said to them, Men of Israel, take heed to yourselves what you intend to do regarding these men. For some time ago, Thaddeus rose up claiming to be somebody. A number of men, about 400, joined him. 
He was slain, and all who obeyed him were scattered and came to nothing. After that, Judas of Galilee rose up in the days of the census and drew away, drew away many people after him. He also perished, and all who obeyed him were dispersed. And now I say to you, keep away from these men and let them alone. For if this plan or this work is of men, it will come to nothing. But if it's of God, you cannot overthrow it, lest you even be found to fight Amen. against God himself. So I just want to encourage you today because there are things that God is doing in your life and in my life and in this church, and it's God. But there are also things that are going on out here. So if we don't keep our eyes on Jesus, we can get drawn away. These people were drawn away, and they were, they were acts of men. They were moves of men, and when the men died, the people dispersed. So Gamaliel was saying, listen, if it's man, don't worry about it. But if it's not, and it's God, you're going to find yourself fighting against God himself. Amen. So I just want to give that to you. Because God knows what he's doing. And he's telling us, we need to be focused on him. He will fill us. He will do what he wants to do if we'll yield to him. Amen. He won't always do what we want him to do. He won't always have us be who we think we should be. But what he will do is he will glorify himself in and through us if we will yield to him. But you got to yield to him. you got to give it up. you got to sacrifice. And he will give you the strength because of the joy of the Lord in you to let go of your plan and go forth in his plan. I think about this all the time because it is 2023 and God spoke a word to me in 2014, almost 10 years. And I know it was the Lord that spoke to me, but I interpret it as the way that I would in my flesh through my filters. So I've not seen the manifestation of that word completely yet. But I know that it's God, and I'm not going to worry about it because there's no timetable with him. And sometimes when you speak prophetically as a prophet and you speak a prophetic word from God, it's not always for you and your house. Sometimes it is to bring it into existence for somebody else. So Marcy and I were up here praying tonight, hand in hand, and I felt the boldness of the Lord come on me, and I spoke a word out loud as a prophet. Because if it doesn't go out, because Jesus is the spirit of prophecy, then it can't take form. Jesus spoke into existence light. He, ex he spoke into existence us. He spoke. And it was done. Because Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. So people that don't believe in prophecy, that's not a good thing. Because that's who he is. Amen. But with that comes a great responsibility. You Amen. better know it's God. And even if you get it wrong, God will take care of it. But we have to be humble enough to say, you know what, I thought I was hearing from God. I wasn't, and I need to apologize to you. Because we all get it wrong. I thought it was. I, we were sure. We were in agreement. It was good. We got it. No. So what would he do? Have us do? Apologize. Because we're human. We got junk yet. We got filters. But listen, guys, don't let fear stop you from speaking don't let fear stop you from praying don't let fear stop you from keeping your eyes focused on jesus don't let what man might be able to do to you because i promise you just like what happened these guys were set outside and they had a private discussion if it was man it dispersed it dispersed but if it's god 
You'll be fighting them your, uh, yourself. This is God. The river of life is God. God built this church. God continues to build this church. And as long as we stay focused on what he wants, we're going to be okay. You're his church. As long as you stay focused on what he wants in your life, you're going to be okay. And God will take you to the place you're called to be. He'll do it. He'll open doors. He'll close doors. He'll take you. He'll do it. And he'll lead by peace. He'll lead by presence. He'll lead by his spirit. Amen? So he put joy in us. The same kind of joy that Jesus had that got him to the call on his life. So the same kind of joy that Jesus has is in us so that we can get to the place of the call that's on our life that God is taking us to, why we're here, what our purpose is, what our purpose is. Stay close to Jesus. Stay close to your Father in heaven. Stay close in prayer. Stay close in worship. Stay close in the word. Because the days ahead are not going to be fun. But I promise you, you'll be okay in Christ. I don't know who said it, maybe Paul, but, you know, what can you do to the body? The body only dies once. We continue on. And we don't have to worry about that yet. But what we do want to do is walk in the power of God's love and the presence and allow your hands to be his hands and allow your feet to be his feet. Let your voice be his voice. Let your hugs be his arm. Let your high fives be his. Let him live in you. Amen? Amen. David, you want to get ready? So, Father, let your will be done. Father, let your will be done. (coughs) Father, let your kingdom come on earth as in heaven. Lord, I pray tonight that if we have any kind of offense against anybody in this room or anybody that you're bringing to our mind right now, that we would lay it down and forgive. That we would humble ourselves and let go of that thing because that will lead us into darkness every time. Any insubordination, On any level, Lord, we lay that down because that will lead to division. Any judgment, we lay that down. We lift up your name. We lift up your love. We lift up unity in the body of Christ. We lift up your joy that's set before us now, God so that we can do what you're asking each and every one of us to do. I ask God that your anointing would fall on each person according to your perfect will. In Jesus' name I pray and all God's people said, Amen. Amen.